Vector quantized variational auto encoders. What are they and why do we need them? So, overall roadmap, where are we? Um, text to image AI tools. We are now finally in the final lane to explain how DAL E works. This was the main text to image AI tool in 2020. Today, of course, when we're here almost at the end of 2022, we use diffusion as the mechanism, but it is very important that you understand the generation before this. And this generation before was vector quantized variational autoencoder. So, and you are not gonna believe this, but as I showed you in my other videos, that physics played an important role in providing or igniting new ideas how to implement code. Now, of course, physics and mathematics generated insights and formalisms over models, theorems, how to describe dynamical systems for centuries. And now we are going to use them in our particular case with vector quantized variational autoencoder. And I think this visualizes it very nicely. But what we want to do is we take our continuous space that we have and we going to quantize our available Latin space. And we will have a rector representation, but we will have a lot of subspaces. And normally what you have between zero and one, you have an infinity hidden behind just these two numbers. And now what we do to have it computationally easier, we quantize now our available Latin space. We will have little compartments and this is a beautiful visualization of it. The original research paper you see here, it is from May 2018, of course, from Google, and it was called Neural Discrete Representation Learning. And they specified the two main differences from the variational autoencoders. And at first, the encoder network outputs discrete rather than continuous codes, and the prior is learned rather than a static Gaussian distribution. Have a look at this paper, it is highly interested, but in summary, we can say that our vector quantization or our also called discrete latent variational autoencoder model uh, makes efficient use of the latent space, but in a very particular way. And a lot of people miss out that this is the crucial element of distinction. So it can successfully model important features. A normal of those features span multi-dimension in the data space. For example, if you have on a, on a picture, on an image, you have objects that span many pixels or messages in a text fragment. But if you construct your Latin space in a particular way, you can model those features in a, in a less dimensional representation. So you do not lose your capacity or noise or imperceptible details, which are often just local. And lastly, once a good discrete Latin structure is discovered by our vector quantized uh, model, we train a powerful prior over these discrete random variables, yielding interesting sample in useful application. In my last video, I showed you what is a prior what is normally a prior distribution, a Gaussian distribution, if we look at variational autoencoders. If you want to get more details, please check out my last video on this topic. Now, very interesting, if you apply this to voice, is you can have different voices. Did you ever ask yourself, hey, how is a computer able to generate different voices? This is exactly how it is done. You can discover the Latin structure of language, and you can equip your decoder with a speaker identity, so to so speak. So again, let's summarize it a little bit before we dive into the detail. What is the main difference to the classical variational autoencoder? Normally, the posteriors and the priors in a variational autoencoders are assumed to be normally distributed Gaussians. Uh, with some diagonal covariance, which allow for the Gaussian reparameterization trick that I showed you when I was coding variational autoencoder with you in a video, as in two, three videos before this. Now, with vector quantized, we have now 
discrete latent variables. And this is extreme of importance because we go from continuous variables to discrete latent variables with a new way of training. And this way of training is of course inspired by vector quantization. Now, main point that you have to understand is that the posterior and the prior distributions are now categorical. They are not any more Gaussian. They are categorical distributions. And the samples drawn from this categorical distribution index an embedding table. It's a one-hot encoding, if you want, if you think about Word2Vec, for example. And those embeddings then are used as input to the decoder network, and we run back from our latent space through the decoder, and we try to generate the original image. And of course, we have a learning cycle here, and just like our encoder and decoder network, the codebook vectors, and these are now the discrete latent variables, our codebook vectors, are learned via gradient descent. So let's have a look at this in detail. Here is from the original paper uh, visualization, and it shows you here on top our embedding space, our latent space, our hidden space, our representation learning space, whatever you want, like to call it. And now you can see we have discrete subspace elements called vector E1, E2, E3. We have a code book. We have now not a continuous space, topological space, but we have discrete space vectors. So here we go. Do those discrete data representation have advantages? And you're, well, of course, because we do this video, you know the answer is yes, but let's have a look at this. Now, a lot of data we encounter in the real world favors a discrete representation rather than a continuous one. Think about human speech. It is well represented, represented by discrete phonemes and language. Or images. Images contain discrete objects with some discrete set of qualifiers. You can imagine having one discrete variable for the type of an object, a car, a house, a person, one for its color, one for its size, one for its orientation, the car is coming towards you or not, one for its shape, one for its texture, glossy or matte, one for the background color, sunshine, blue sky, one for the background texture, etc. So you see, these discrete variables in our latent space do a lot, do, if, if you do a clever discretization of the space, these discrete variables can define you the type of an object that you see, a cat, a dog, a human, a house, a car. And there is the power of this particular code sequences. Now, of course, in addition, there are a number of algorithms like transformers or BERT models that I showed you that are designed to work on discrete data, especially if you, for example, go for natural language processing. Okay, so this was it that this discretization variable is so important because you can identify the type of object, color, size, and whatever. Now, as I already showed you, the vector quantized uh, variational autoencoders extend the standard autoencoding by adding this discrete codebook component to the network in the embedding space. And what is this codebook? This codebook is basically a list of vectors associated with a corresponding index. And it is used to quantize the bottleneck of the autoencoder. And the output of the, order of the encoder network is compared to all vectors in the codebook, and the codebook vector closest, now in an Euclidean vector space, of course, we construct it, we have a Euclidean distance, is then fed to the decoder. So you say, okay, this is easy, but is there not a limitation if we only allow a specific set of codebook vectors as an input to our decoder, how many beautiful pictures can we reconstruct in this methodology? Is there not a limit? And to answer this, I made this slide, and it shows you if you have, for example, a picture with a grid of 32 pixels times 32 pixel, a grid of vectors, each of these are quantized, and then the entire grid is fed to the decoder. 
Now, all the vectors are quantized to the same cookbook, so the number of discrete values, discrete values doesn't change. But by outputting multiple codes, we are able to exponentially increase the number of data points our decoder can reconstruct. Let's have this example here. Let's example, we have worked with images, so we have a code book of the size 512 dimensions, and our encoder outputs uh, 32 times 32 grid of vectors. Now our decoder, now if you go back from the Latin space to the reconstructed input space, our decoder can now output 512, the size of our code book, times 32 times 32, distinct images. And this is an amazing amount of distinct images you can reconstruct with the decoder, even if you have a limited set, a discrete set of codeput vectors. And this is also the beauty of this model. So, why this model was developed was, of course, for image generation models. At first it was used maybe at image compression and image encryption, but of course the beauty is this text-to-image AI tools in the 2020s. And at that time it was good practice to use GPT, which learns just the distribution of a dictionary, and each time you want to make a next word prediction, remember this, you can look at the distribution and pull out a word that has the highest probability under that predicted distribution of your, I don't know, let's say 10 words. Now, it does have a problem for downstream task. There are hundreds of thousands of words in the language dictionary. Normally, I work with 50,000. And forcing a downstream image generation model to learn a semantic representation of each word is much too much computational intensive. Now, those continuous word embeddings are just too complex for our hardware computers. And if you want to feed those words as inputs to another model, so a model feeds another model, like our image generation model, you need to reduce the complexity of the data because the output of the model one and the input to the model two, this is just too mighty a set of data points. So, our vector quantization variational autoencoder does this by turning complex and continuous word embeddings now on the, on, the, on the side of the word into a small number of simple discrete representation. And this was here this beautiful thing that led to the development of Dall E. Now, again, architecture I showed you maps to a discrete Latin space, effectively classifying them into one set of categories, one among a large but finite set of categories. Now, maybe you also heard of Cogviews, and it was first trained to reconstruct images, and a separate language model was then used to map a user input text, like we have now with this diffuse uh, with text model to the Latin space where the image generation occurred. So you had a lot of models before. And what I want to show you now, yeah, if you code it, is quite different from the original variational autoencoder in code. You showed you that about here, just instead of continuous latent variables, you have to discrete. But the second step is, uh, refers to modeling the distribution of the discrete Latin token via an autoregressive model. So you don't need to model the KLD of the Latin variable at the prior, like in the ordinary variational autoencoder. Now this was a little bit of a secret of the generator of this, but just that you know when doing this coding, it is not as easy as you might imagine. From today, in 2022, there was a beautiful uh, publication, you see it here, Vector Quantized Diffusion Model for Text-to-Image Synthesis. Uh, they have a very nice summary of our VQVA, and I've here took a short excerpt from this, and you have here at the bottom, you have the HTTP link. Have a look at this PDF. It is highly interesting, but it shows you the mathematical details and also if you want the last function for this particular, particular vector quantized variational autoencoder. This is the formula 
and it gives you a very good overview if you're really interested to dive into this area. And as I told you, the image generation models 2020, we had Doll E creating images from text. And this was the main part. Our VQVA was the main component that allows Dall E to generate these pictures. The other part, of course, is the transformer model for this multimodal autoregressive generation and the correlations between language and images. And if you don't know Dall E, it was a 12 billion parameter version of GPT 3 trained to generate images from text description using a data set of text image pairs. And I have here the GitHub code if you want to have a look at the code implementation. Beautiful. So, yeah, of course, there was with Dall E, there was also this clip. Uh, this was a solution for image and text linking. And a natural clip offers a reliable way of pairing a text snippet with its image representation. Yeah, but it's not so important. More important is what is standing above it and these two points of the autoregressive approach. So we train a discrete variational autoencoder model I just showed you to compress images to image tokens. And now you understand the sentence because the first time I read this sentence I said, what are image tokens? But now having understood how this image token is generated, now we know what is the meaning of this. And then you concatenate and code a text snippet that you have done with the image token and train a regressive transformer to learn the joint distribution over text and image. So this is more or less the explanation why I do not show you clip in detail because we moved on and today we have diffusion. Diffusion as the new mechanisms for our text to image or the image generalization models. Diffusion will be a topic of my next video just as an outlook to show you here we have our three videos on autoencoder denoising autoencoders variational autoencoders then vector quantized variational autoencoders and then the next video will be on diffusion and then we achieved our task to have a good overview a good understanding of the methods that are applied to get to our text to image ai tools that we use now at the end of 2022. I say thank you for accompanying me here with this not so easy topic on vector quantized variational autoencoders. And I hope I see you in the next video where I show you the state of the art diffusion.